Hi everyone, I'm uh, Mami Ratsim Bazafi and uh, today I will talk about uh, the design of a uh, high performance multithreading framework. So the multithreading framework is implemented in NIM, but uh, everything I'm talking about is uh, something that you can also do uh, in C, Rust, uh, Ada, uh, any kind of language. And my hope is that uh, after that talk, you will be able to implement your own multithreading framework in a weekend. So let's see how we can do that. Um, so a bit uh, of things about myself. Uh, I've been using NIM from, uh, for three years now, uh, and I'm a blockchain developer uh, during the day and a high performance computing developer and also a data scientist during the night. You have uh, my Twitter and my GitHub account. So, how did I start doing a multithreading framework from scratch? Three years ago, I discovered NIM. I wanted to do some high performance computing uh, in NIM, and I had two threading models I could use. Uh, one is OpenMP, because NIM uh, compiles to C, and uh, you can add uh, OpenMP annotation to NIM. So that makes it uh, very easy to do parallel for loops. The second threading model is a simple thread pool. Uh, with just a uh, spawn and a sync uh, statement. And uh, so I used uh, OpenMP uh, for starter on my multithreading run, uh, on my uh, high performance computing uh, and tensor library. But a year ago, uh, I was dissatisfied with uh, lots of the internal, including the threading. Uh, so I started to re-implement everything from scratch. And the goal today is, as I said, uh, end up with a, a multi-threading runtime that you can implement in a weekend. And to go there, we need to first understand the design space. Second, understand what are uh, hardware and software multi-threading. Uh, so definitions, use cases, parallel API, and the sources of overhead, how to benchmark them, and uh, the design constraint uh, that those bring. So first thing, understanding the design space. Uh, one thing that you hear often is that concurrency is not parallelism. So here you have a coffee machine, or here two coffee machines. Concurrency, it's the ability of uh, the hardware no, sorry, of, of the OS or the scheduler to switch between, uh, to interleave two threads of execution on one single resources. In case of a parallel uh, runtime, you have two threads of execution and two resources. Uh, another thing that you will uh, see a lot is probably uh, one one threading, n one threading, mn threading. So this is about on the left uh, the number of application thread, and on the right of hardware thre hardware thread. And uh, so this is something that is often seen at the OS level. So when you talk about uh, a very old OS, uh, they had uh, sometimes uh, n one threading or one one threading. But this is something that also uh, happens at the language or the runtime level. Uh, it's just uh, a definition and we won't see it again. So the problem is uh, for multi-threading runtime, how to schedule n tasks on n hardware threads. And another thing on the design space is uh, latency versus throughput. So latency is uh, for a single task, if you have like uh, M tasks and you have a single task, maybe uh, you want uh, the single task to be fair, like first in, first out. So this is what happens when you have multiple clients, a single server, and you are supposed to serve all your clients, let's say a web page, and um, you don't want to, uh, clients to uh, spend an hour waiting until uh, every, everyone else uh, is done. Or for video decoding, if you have multiple frames and you need uh, each frame to be uh, 
uh, processed one after the other, you need uh, some fairness. So this is optimizing for latency. The other thing is optimizing for throughput. For example, in scientific uh, simulations, you don't care about uh, the single uh, computation. You want everything, th the whole uh, work package, to be done as fast as possible. So even if the first task uh, waits for one week, as long as everything is done uh, as fast as possible, that's fine. Another uh, design uh, axis is cooperative versus preemptive. Cooperative multi-threading, uh, you probably heard about coroutines, fibers, green threads, uh, first class continuations in a scheme, for example. Um, the characteristic is that those are lightweight uh, and uh, you cannot use hardware threads for those. Second, preemptive multi-threading, uh, also uh, P-threads. Uh, used in OpenMP, TBB, or Silk, if you dive into multi-threading runtimes. Those are scheduled by the, uh, uh, the OS. They have easier uh, context switches, and you need synchronization primitives because those are real threads, let's say. So synchronization primitives can be locks, atomics, and also things that are uh, more uh, uh, less known, like transactional memory or message passing. And you have I.O. tasks and CPU tasks. So I.O. tasks, like uh, you're waiting for uh, network uh, connections uh, and uh, or files, and you create tasks. So those are uh, usually latency optimized and implemented via async await, while CPU tasks, they are throughput optimized. And uh, the terms that are used uh, usually are uh, spawn and sync. So th there is a, a parallel, let's say, between both API. It shows that the internals are completely different. And the requirements are different. The skills uh, for maintenance are different. The OS API are completely different as well. So for the talk, I will focus on CPU tasks optimized for throughput on preemptive scheduling, so on multiple hardware frames. So now, we have a bit of definitions, and let's see uh, the different forms of uh, multi-threading that exists. At a hardware level, we have uh, four kinds. There are many more, but uh, the four main kinds are uh, ILP, instruction level parallelism. So a hardware, uh, let, let's say a CPU, uh, ARM or x86, has multiple execution ports. Uh, for example, to do an addition, you have uh, two or three ports available. Uh, they are called 0, 5, 6, uh, something like this. And uh, you can uh, schedule multiple uh, additions in parallel uh, that's done by the processor, as long as one execution port is free. SIMD, single instruction, multiple data. So if you heard about SSE, AVX, or uh, on ARM uh, NEON, for example, uh, those are also called vector instructions. You have an addition, and it works on four floating points uh, at the same time. SIMT, single instruction, multiple thread. So those are uh, GPUs, uh, basically. Uh, and uh, on GPU, you have uh, 32 thread for NVIDIA GPU. Uh, those are called a warp, and they have to do the exact same uh, instructions. And for example, if you do a if branch uh, on a GPU, it will execute both branches. And the last one, simultaneous multi-threading, uh, also called in Intel speak uh, hyper-threading. It's uh, a way to use all the execution ports by having uh, logical threads uh, sharing the same execution resources, same memory bandwidth. Uh, because it's usually quite hard to use all execution ports at the same time. And uh, it's not always two sibling cores that are used in hyperthreading. If you use uh, Xeon Phi, uh, it's uh, four uh, sibling cores that you have. Now, let's talk about the form of parallelism uh, that you might want to implement or support in your runtime. First one, data parallelism. Easy, it's uh, just a parallel for loop. If you use the OpenMP, or if you use uh, on C++ Intel TBB Parallel 4, or on Rust uh, Rayon, uh, that's exactly that. Uh, it's the same instruction, multiple data. 
uh, use cases, scientific computing, you have uh, vectors, matrices, you do a for loop on uh, all data. Challenges, uh, how to support nested parallelism. For example, OpenMP doesn't really support uh, nested parallelism. And there are other uh, load balancing challenges. So uh, it might seem surprising, but splitting a loop is, uh, for multi-threading is actually complex. Because uh, if you split before uh, entering the loop, uh, maybe you might try to split uh, a loop in 10, even though the loop is uh, super small and you don't need to split it. Uh, if you split, um, well, I won't enter into the detail because, uh, but uh, you have uh, uh, free splitting strategies uh, that you can uh, research if you want to uh, implement data parallelism. Uh, the main one, task parallelism. So this is uh, spawn and sync. It's basically a function call that may or may not be executed on uh, another hardware threads. And the may or may not is managed by the scheduling runtime. An example, uh, Intel TBB or OpenMP tasks since uh, uh, OpenMP version 3.0. Use cases, anywhere you want a parallel function. Uh, for example, uh, parallel uh, tree algorithm like uh, depth first or breadth first search, di divide and conquer algorithm. And uh, there are multiple challenges. The API, uh, now most of uh, the runtimes uh, are using futures uh, in Weave and in NIM. I'm using Flowvar to distinguish from IO tasks that are using futures and CPU tasks that are using Flowvar. It's just a name. Uh, over challenge, synchronization, scheduling overhead, and uh, memory management, because you need to save tasks. Okay, five minutes left. Let's go fast. Uh, we have another kind of thing, data flow parallelism. Uh, four names, pipeline, graph, stream, data-driven parallelism. The main thing is you can express dependencies between tasks, like uh, dependency in, dependency uh, out and in out closes. Parallel API. You have async, launch uh, a thread uh, that may be parallelized, await, uh, await for a result. <coughs> so this is uh, for IO tasks, and we can use uh, spawn sync for um, uh, multi threaded tasks. Data parallelism, I talked about for loops. Data flow parallelism, there is no established API. Uh, but uh, you can uh, use either a declarative one where you uh, exp uh, create a, a flow graph explicitly before entering a parallel section, or you can pass a handle uh, like a promise uh, to uh, set uh, a task ready or not. Sources of overhead and implementation details. Uh, you have uh, scheduling overhead because uh, switching between tasks is costly and switching between uh, kernel uh, when you need uh, to create threads or destroy them is costly as well. Easy solution, use a thread pool. Memory overhead. Uh, you might, uh, if you use the Fibonacci tasks, uh, it, uh, Fibonacci 40, for example, we create two at the power of 40 tasks, uh, meaning uh, trillions of tasks and you need to deal with memory management uh, when there is nothing to do. So you will need uh, some uh, clever memory uh, management uh, with memory pools to deal with that. And also on memory pools, uh, sometimes you have one thread that produces all the tasks and another thread that consumes everything and you cannot use caching in that case. So you need to handle that as well. I'm skipping on the cactus stack and segmented stacks but uh, it's a complex research, and uh, Go and Rust tried and failed and abandoned cactus tasks. Uh, and the new GCC from three months ago uh, uh, also is a stackless to avoid cactus task issues. Load balancing, the meat of uh, the talk, let's say. Um, the issue with simple thread pool is that usually you have one global task queue you dispatch a task to a ready thread, but you have a contention issue 
because uh, this task queue is, if you have uh, 10 threads that are asking, uh, uh, give me a task, give me a task, give me a task, uh, the task queue will be uh, very uh, busy. And the best way to scale a parallel program is to share nothing. This is Amdahl's law. And it tells you that if you have 95% of your program that is parallel, the maximum speed up that you can get is only 20. So you need to avoid serial parts as much as possible. And serial uh, sources of serializations are the single task queue. If you have a memory pool that is uh, also global, and you need to distribute everything on multiple threads. So one way to do that is to have work stealing. You have multiple worker, one IP. Everyone uh, has his own task queue. It push and pop from uh, one end of the queue. And when you run out of tasks, it gets uh, from another worker a task. This way, the synchronization happens only if the queue is empty. This is a summary of every, uh, uh, the relate, uh, things related to work stealing. And there is ma mathematical proof of optimality, uh, asymptotical uh, optimality, which is why almost everyone except Julia is using uh, work stealing. Uh, Julia is uh, using something called parallel depth first scheduling. Uh, it's also proven uh, optimal, but it has a different uh, performance profile uh, and hover profile. Uh, it's still in development because it was released in September and it's, uh, you can uh, look into it. Uh, one thing that you should look into are, are memory models. I've given the talk from Herb Sutter uh, inside. Uh, it will, if you want to use uh, Atomics, uh, relaxed Atomics, acquire release, uh, it's very important to watch it because it's written nowhere. Um, I'm skipping on load balancing. You have a uh, multiple strategy to uh, uh, share tasks, uh, still one, still half, uh, adaptative. But uh, I don't have the time to go inside. So the end, work stealing in a runtime, uh, in a weekend. You need a task data structure with a function pointer and a blob for task inputs. Uh, or a closure, you need a start, stop, step for data parallelism if you want to ex uh, express a for loop. Prev next field for intrusive queues and dequeues. A future pointer to uh, send the result back to uh, the caller. A work ceiling dequeue with a head tail field uh, and push first, pop first and still last operations. And for the API, in it to uh, create your thread pool, exit to shut it, on, uh, shut it down, and spawn sync to create tasks and um, retrieve their results. Some references, those are also on the FOSDEM website. And that's it. So. question or two, and the next speaker should come up as soon as possible. Yes. Uh, sorry? Yes. So uh, currently, my uh, runtime is actually uh, at least as fast as, or faster than uh, any other runtimes. Uh, OpenMP, TBB, uh, Rayon, uh, HPX, Julia. So really, uh, uh, if you have a challenge on benchmark speed, I'm ready to take it. <laughs> <laughs>